it's time to finally revisit this game. A lot of people thought that I was unfair to it, and I thought I was too. Until I replayed it. When I review a game, I don't look at other reviews or scores. That way, I can go in with an unbiased opinion because I have no knowledge of the game prior to playing it, so there's no preconceived notions about it. But when people say that I've been unfair to the game and I feel the same way, then I'll go look at reviews by other people so maybe I can get some insight as to why people like it. Maybe I missed something. Something that others saw that I did not. And maybe I'll see that too after having it pointed out. Like with Artie Lightfoot, I was able to see what other people saw so it wasn't as bad as I thought it was. However, I really can't say the same for Croc. With Artie Lightfoot, there were very few reviews, but the scores were fairly high, averaging a score of 7 out of 10. Croc, on the other hand, was way more polarized. IGN ranks it at 8 out of 10, GameSpot has it at 5.8, and GameFAQs has it at 5.6 from 13 people who reviewed the game, and 7 for the average out of 220 votes. I won't use game ranking or Metacritic as people have pointed out various flaws in how those scores are calculated as they assign weights to reviews. The higher the profile, the more weight they assign it, so a review from a high profile website can really offset the score. And the reviews that I read about Croc, the end result didn't make much sense. While they praised the visuals and sound, they heavily criticized the controls and gameplay. Half of them gave the game a good score, and half of them gave a bad score. Which leads me to the conclusion that some people are putting graphics and sound over gameplay and control. If you're going to put graphics and sound over gameplay and control, then Sonic 06 must be the best game in the universe for you. The graphics are pretty good for the PlayStation though. The textures are very detailed and Croc's running animation is done pretty well, matching his speed as he moves. I'm not a fan of the music as it doesn't get me into the mood to do some platforming. I'm not expecting something along the lines of Sonic music, but I would like something that says that we're going to have some fun. The music feels like it has terrible self-confidence. It's like, hey, let's let's go through these levels. Come on, let's let's do some platforming. It's it's gonna be some real fun. But then we have platformers on the N64 like Conker and Banjo Kazooie that come out and slap you in the face saying, you're gonna remember our music for the rest of your life whether you want to or not. But it's music and everyone likes different stuff, like how some people like Justin Bieber and people who actually have good taste in music don't. In my first review of this game, I criticized the controls and rightfully so because they really aren't that good. When I reviewed it then, I didn't have an analog controller. Well, I did, the game just didn't want to recognize it. Croc came out during the time Sony was bringing out the dual analog controller, so the developers made it so that the game could use both. And depending on your controller, Croc controls differently. If you use the D-pad, Croc controls like a tank. You can really only go forward, and turning while moving results in a very slow turn, and pressing down will make him walk backwards. To turn effectively, you need to stop, press left or right to turn, and then move forward. He controls like Bubsy from Bubsy 3D with the whole stop, turn, and go mechanic. Using the analog controller is highly recommended as Croc controls a lot better with it. He'll actually move in the direction that you hold the analog stick in. However, this really isn't that good either because there's a lot of small platforms. I find myself tapping the analog stick just ever so slightly because I don't want to fall off. The analog stick is good for general navigation but not for precision. The D-pad is good for precision but not general navigation or boss battles. In the first review I had a hard time with the boss battles because I was using the D-pad as the analog sticks would not work at the time. But using the analog is a lot easier easier for bosses which pretty much have you just running around in a small circle and waiting for an opening to attack. The game is a platform game in a very literal sense. You're just jumping from platform to platform. Every level is just a small group of small rooms and hallways. The game is very enclosed and feels very linear. At least Bubsy 3D's levels were a lot more open and much bigger in comparison and give you that go anywhere feel. Yeah, you heard right. I just complimented Bubsy 3D's level design. Kind of feel ashamed of myself. But there were other platform games that did level design better. The original Tomb Raider came out a year before Croc and had better platforming, had that go anywhere feel with better controls, and that game used the D-pad only. And Tomb Raider 2 came out the same year as Croc and had better platforming and better controls and had that go anywhere feel. Spyro the Dragon came out a year later and also had better controls, platforming, and exploration. Crash Bandicoot 2 came out the same year and had better controls and better platforming. Compared to the games that I just listed, Croc can't hold a candle to them. Those four games are vastly superior in every way. And I could probably forgive Croc's not-so-good controls if the game didn't feel so derivative. Now, I'm not saying that it needs to be original, but it needs something to stand out, and Croc just lacks anything to make it stand out among the rest. Tomb Raider had massive levels, was big on story, and really showed us what could be done with the hardware. Spyro had humorous writing, a clearly defined goal for the stages, and good combat that made it fun to play. Croc just lazily borrows elements from other games. They took the ground pound from Super Mario 64. 
They took the golden ring mechanic from Sonic the Hedgehog. You won't die as long as you hold one gem, but you'll drop them all if you take a hit, and the gems disappear almost instantly. And you don't get that brief few seconds of invincibility. So if you take a hit, run. But if you fall in water or another liquid hazard, you'll be bounced up, but will die if you hit the water again if you can't land on a platform. And if you die in a boss area, you'll respawn in that area, but there will be no gems for you to collect. To the game's credit, you do get infinite continues and checkpoints are plentiful. You're creating a brand new intellectual property on a system that's growing wildly out of control and popularity. You're supposed to wow us. The graphics are pretty good for the time, and if you think the music was good, then yeah, the game comes off as impressive from there. But the gameplay is so repetitive and bare bones with no incentive, and there's hardly a story to keep you going. Your objective is to rescue all six gobos in the stages. There's four worlds, six stages, and they're all pretty short, and two boss stages per world, and you get a secret world when you collect all 240 gobos. Every stage feels the same as the last with no variation in difficulty, and because you're not required to get all the gobos, you can just go from beginning to end with no consequence. The only motivation to search for the gobos is to see the secret areas, and that's not really a good motivator. At least for me. The stages are boring and could have been a lot more fun. They could have been a lot more open instead of a group of small rooms with maybe one or two enemies per room. Now I understand that not everyone played the same games. Not everyone played Tomb Raider, or Crash, or Spyro, or Banjo-Kazooie, but you really have no excuse for not going back and playing them now. With the advent of emulators, the PlayStation Network, or Xbox Live Arcade, there should be no excuse for not at least giving those games a try. Tomb Raider had voice acting, cutscenes fully rendered and in-game, larger areas to explore, and a more open environment, and it had a lot more enemies. Banjo-Kazooie had massive levels, really good writing and funny dialogue with music that you'll remember forever. Tomb Raider was just under 600 megabytes in size. Banjo-Kazooie is 16 megabytes in size, and that game was on a cartridge, which had almost no memory when compared to a CD. Croc is 670 megabytes in size, and its game world is much, much smaller than Tomb Raider or Banjo-Kazooie, which leads to the conclusion that Croc was not compressed properly at all. And maybe if it was properly compressed, then they would have been able to do more with the game. If you compare other games at the time, there really is no comparison. They overshadow Croc with better gameplay and innovation. In comparison to other games at the time, Croc comes off as giving the bare minimum when you measure the amount of effort that's been put into it. The fifth generation of gaming was the renaissance of gaming. This is where the limits of technology were pushed to bring games that were truly innovative. Some of the longest running game franchises were born in this era. Croc never made it past two games. A third was planned for the PS2, Xbox, and GameCube, but was cancelled. In terms of age, Croc is one of those you-had-to-be-there type of games. More specifically, you had to have been a child, like single digits in age to fully enjoy it. It's very much a game designed for children, as it's very simple in design and very easy when it comes to difficulty. Croc is just one of those games that's either for you, or it isn't, and for a basic platformer, it's alright. I myself was just playing more sophisticated games at the time, so Croc just is not for me.